In this presentation, a biplanar closed wedge osteotomy of the distal femur will be planned and executed. The osteotomy will then be fixed with the Tomofix medial distal femur, or MDF, plate. Following the completion of this exercise, you should understand the clinical indications and contraindications, the patient position, the surgical approach, the planning and execution of a biplanar closed wedge osteotomy of the distal femur, and fixation of the osteotomy with the Tomofix MDF plate. A closed wedge osteotomy of the medial distal femur is indicated for unicompartmental lateral gonarthrosis with valgus malalignment of the distal femur, idiopathic or post-traumatic valgus deformity of the distal femur, and additional fixation for complex distal femoral fractures. Contraindications include inflammatory arthritis. The patient is positioned supine so that the hip knee, and ankle joint can be visualized with the image intensifier. The contralateral leg is lowered at the hip joint to facilitate access to the medial distal femur. The sterile draping also exposes the iliac crest so that the leg axis can be checked intraoperatively. A sterile tourniquet may be used. A biplanar osteotomy is planned where the transverse plane is perpendicular to the dorsal and medial cortices. The direction and location of the cuts are important for primary stability following the osteotomy. For a high level of stability to be achieved, it is important that the transverse osteotomy is isosceles, which ensures full cortical contact after the osteotomy is closed. It is important that the transverse osteotomy is oblique, which maximizes the contact surface. It is important that the transverse osteotomy runs from the medial metaphyseal area to just proximal of the lateral condyle, as the blood supply and biomechanical circumstances are most suitable in this area. The transverse osteotomy cuts should end 5 to 10 millimeters before the lateral cortical bone, leaving a lateral hinge. The transverse osteotomy cuts should pass through three quarters of the bone, leaving the ventral quarter intact. The coronal cut must ascend anteriorly at 90 to 110 degrees and should exit the anterior cortex after 2 to 5 centimeters. The image intensifier is used to establish the hinge point of the osteotomy. The hinge point is located just proximal to the upper margin of the lateral femoral condyle, 5 to 10 millimeters from the lateral cortex. In the bone model, a K-wire is inserted to mark the hinge point of the osteotomy. In the clinical situation, this would be done with fluoroscopy and never with a K-wire. In addition to marking the hinge point, this K-wire serves to weaken the lateral cortical bone and facilitates closure of the osteotomy. Two K-wires, which are aimed to coincide at the hinge point, are inserted. The distance between the K-wires at the entry point is based upon the preoperative planning. Two additional K-wires are now inserted parallel and dorsal to the first K-wires. The transverse osteotomy cuts are made in the dorsal three quarters of the bone with an oscillating saw, parallel to the K-wires, which act as a guide for the saw blade. It is important to ensure that a fresh saw blade is used. A blunt saw blade can lead to thermal necrosis of the bone and the surrounding soft tissue. When sawing clinically, the soft tissues dorsally must be protected with a Hohmann retractor, and the saw blade is kept cool.
to make the ascending osteotomy cut in the ventral quarter of the bone, a thinner saw blade is used. Here, the soft tissue is protected with the Langenbeck soft tissue retractor, and the saw blade is cooled constantly. The K-wires are now removed. The bone wedge is removed, and a visual check is made to verify that any residual fragments have been removed before the osteotomy is closed. With very hard bone, the lateral cortex can be weakened with a 2.5 mm drill bit, or K-wire. The osteotomy is closed with carefully applied, continuous pressure to the lateral lower limb, while the knee joint region is stabilized. This may take several minutes. The osteotomy gap can then be held closed either by manual compression or with two crossed K-wires that are positioned so as not to interfere with the intended position of the plate. To allow uniform orientation, the four distal plate holes are labeled A through D, and the four proximal combination holes are labeled 1 through 4, from distal to proximal. It should be ensured that the correct implant is selected. The guiding block is used to align the drill sleeves on the distal part of the plate. The drill sleeves are inserted. And the guiding block is removed. A 2.0 mm K-wire is inserted through the centering sleeve in plate hole A to temporarily secure the plate. It is important that the plate position and the trajectory of the K-wire is checked with the image intensifier. The K-wire must not exit the condyles posteriorly. If necessary, the plate position or sagittal tilt is modified. A second K-wire may be inserted in plate hole 3 to maintain the alignment of the plate relative to the femoral shaft while the plate is fixed distally. The first screw hole, B, is drilled using the 4.3mm LCP drill bit with stop through the drill sleeve.
The screw length can be determined by reading the drilled depth from the mark on the drill bit or with the depth gauge after the drill sleeve has been removed. The screws should be as long as possible without protruding through the lateral cortex. The screw is inserted using a power tool, but not fully tightened. The 4 newton meter torque limiter is used to lock the screw manually. The optimum torque has been reached once the first click has been heard and felt. The same procedure is used to insert the screws in holes C and D. Then, the K wire in hole A is removed and replaced with a locking screw using the same technique. The image intensifier is used to ensure that the screws do not penetrate the intracondylar notch. To compress the osteotomy gap, a 4.5 mm cortex screw can be inserted eccentrically, proximal to the osteotomy in the dynamic part of combination hole 1. The screw length is determined from the depth gauge. To achieve good interfragmentary compression, the screw should be inserted perpendicular to the plate surface. This is particularly important if the lateral cortical bone fractured as the osteotomy was closed. In this situation, aiming the screw more proximal will compress the lateral cortical hinge point even more. The screw should be final tightened by hand. The short 3.2 mm drill bit of the LCP Universal Drill Guide is used in hole 2 to penetrate the medial cortex. The 5.0 mm monocortical locking screw is inserted using a power tool. And then tightened by hand with the torque limiter. Monocortical locking screws are also inserted into plate holes 3 and 4. Bicortical screws may be indicated in cases where increased stability is required. For example, in patients with compromised bone quality or obesity. The cortex screw is removed from hole 1 to be replaced with a bicortical 5.0 mm locking screw. The LCP drill sleeve is screwed into the threaded part of the combi hole, and the hole is drilled with the 4.3 mm LCP drill bit. The screw length is determined from either the marking on the drill bit or the depth gauge. The locking screw is inserted using a power tool. And then tightened by hand with the torque limiter. The final correction and position of the implant is confirmed with the image intensifier. You should now understand the clinical indications and contraindications.
the patient position, the surgical approach, the planning and execution of a biplanar closed wedge osteotomy of the distal femur, and fixation of the osteotomy with the Tomofix MDF plate.